Okay. This is, look how good this is. I mean, I can't, I have no words for that one. Welcome to this is the worst, where we believe that if done properly, a low carb lifestyle is not only easy, but it is sustainable long term and not at all restrictive. This is a meal plan video where I show you what I'm going to make for this week. I cook for four days. It's usually two of each type, and then I make some chia seed pudding, and I usually make egg cups. I don't really show that because that's the same every week, and I have videos of that by themselves. So for this week, I'm going to be making carnitas as well as a it's kind of a sweet and spicy beef, and that's gonna go on the side of some broccoli, I believe. It's just frozen, I'm gonna roast it, and then just bring it all together. And the carnitas are going to be a part of tacos because I bought some carb balance wraps. We're just gonna put some cheese, some peppers, onions. So the purpose of these meal plan videos, meal prep videos, are to show you that it doesn't have to be boring, it doesn't have to be repetitive, and still enjoy what you eat, still lose weight, still be healthy. This is gonna be a long video. It's not gonna be a long video for you to watch, but it's gonna be a long video for me to make just because the carnitas take about four hours in the oven because usually it's a pork shoulder. So let me just show you real quick. I have made fennel on this channel before, but I'm going to cook this one differently. We're going to cut into maybe like two by two chunks, put it in the Dutch oven, put a little bit of liquid in it, season it completely, have it just go for about four hours. At first, I'm going to be making my chia seed pudding and my egg cups. While that goes, I'm going to start with that. Probably take like an hour break read a book and do something and then finish it off with the beef and broccoli and we should be fine if you want to see more meal prep videos like this or the smaller recipe videos that come from these videos so make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that little bell notification so you do see when these come out long intro we're going to restart and then we're going to do this carnitas okay so i'm going to do this 300 and let me get my little towel have my towel good there this is going to be a little bit of work we're going to have to speed past this because it's going to take a while but it's okay, we have four hours. I'm officially starting at 11.30. I want to start at 9.30. First thing is the skin. I don't want the skin on this, but I still want the skin. Now, I'm just gonna have to cut a seam. Now, since I am gonna use this and cook it, I don't really care how much of the meat I still have on the skin because this is gonna be used as like little chicharro. So Once you open up, it gets a lot easier. Probably with the proper paring knife, this is better. If you saw my pork skin nacho video, I had a lot of trouble with pork skin. It doesn't want to break easily. So actually, we're going to put this on a rack because we want to let that fat render. We don't want it just to put it under high heat because then it doesn't cook. We want to cook it first and then like torch it. I wish I can just like pull it. I just need this part now. I think it was the last time I made pork shoulder. I was like, I need to get a paring knife. And now it's again a pork shoulder. And I still need a paring knife. My hands are starting to freeze. Okay. Now, try and get as close to the bone. Pretty sure there's better ways to do this, but I didn't look anything up, so we're just going to do it this way. And when it stops working, we'll do something different. And that's why you're gonna to continue to cook this because there, I'm gonna miss a lot. So we're gonna just cook it at low temperature and it'll still be fine. Okay. Um, I think this is where we're going to leave it. This is going to be for our carnitas meat, and that is going to be for, we're just going to cook it so that we don't waste any kind of meat. Um, I wish I had the sleeve up. Okay, so I have half an onion from yesterday, a whole onion. This needs some garlic. Do I have a lime? And we're going to do stuff with that lime. Let's just start here with a new knife or a clean knife. I don't use this knife. Right now we're just doing some small strips. I'm going to put that on the bottom. Now this could do multiple things, but what I'm going to do is just going to cut it into rings and put it in there. You could squeeze the juice out, but that's not what I'm going to do. And just little wheels. Part of me thinks that this should have been for that and that should have been for this. I usually don't use this, so I don't think about it. Just a few cloves of garlic. Not going to do much. Just going to smash, like take the skin off, smash it and put it in there. Okay, so that's onions, garlic, and a few lime wheels. And what we're going to do with this stuff is cut it back into chunks. I'm just touching everything. Now I would usually say they should be the same size, but everything is gonna get cooked. Doesn't necessarily have to be the same size, just small enough. Okay, so I'm gonna put this over here. Now, because there's gonna be liquid, we're just gonna season the whole thing, put some water in, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. We're gonna do some chili powder for this, some cayenne, and some smoked paprika. Okay, so 
I don't know what those measurements were. We're gonna put a cup of water and then mix. You can use broth, but I think that this will work just fine. And that's why I didn't care about how much I put because it's gonna wash off anyway. And now, let me just get this all together. Do you think anything else should go in here? I like the way that smells. Lid. And this is gonna go for, it's 12 o'clock right now. Call it three hours, cause I'm probably like around two, I wanna be done. So we'll say two to three. And I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just be smart about this. Okay, that's in. Now I'm going to deal with this. One hand this time, and we're gonna season this and put it in the same oven. I'm not sure how much space I have now in that oven. This one I'm really only gonna do salt and garlic powder. Okay, now the fat kind of needs to get scored. This is tough because I don't think I have one strong enough to score this thing. Oh look, I'm going through. I think this is the knife. My life would have been so much easier if I used this knife, but kind of, still not the easiest thing to do. Okay, something like that. Now, I'm gonna put this on top and cover it, and hopefully there's enough space, but now that I think about it, I don't think there will be. If we use a smaller one, there might be. All right, this is smaller. So it looks like this instead of that. And it all fits on the top level. So this goes away. We're gonna do our first clean of meal prep and then start with the chia seed pudding, do the egg cups. Okay, so we're good for this. I'm just gonna do this on camera, not gonna talk a lot. It's like two and a half cups of nut milk. This is flax milk. Um, what's next? The almond butter. Let's call this like a quarter cup. Nope, almost as if you forgot how to make this. Okay, see, that's the problem with buying new things, right? They're not supposed to disappear on your second time using them. You can go away now. Next, cups. See, I always forget something. Wouldn't be me if I didn't. Now put about three of these in each. Well, six, it's three each of those, so six of each. Two tablespoons of chocolate and two tablespoons of cinnamon or one and a half oh, two. less than a quarter teaspoon of vanilla and the same for maple extract but you can use vanilla as well if you don't have maple is that it sometimes i feel like i forget things but i guess that's it That's part one. Next up is the egg cup. So again, clean up and bring it back. Okay, so next up, we're gonna do our egg cups and it's gonna be at 300 and it's a little different because it's usually at 350, 375, but it'll just go a little bit longer. It'll cook a little bit differently, that's it. So this week will be ham and Swiss, some back bacon, and then pepperoni cream cheese like usual. Get it started. I'm pretty sure this needs to get cooked. So what I am going to do, well, that doesn't look great. So I'm gonna cut this up. Okay, my fault. So what I'm actually gonna do is just cook it right here real quick while I prep everything else and then put it in. It should be ready by the time I'm ready for it. So I wanna just say that I meal prep every week anyways, and I'm just trying to take you through what I do. So if this is something that you do like, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. And yeah, pretty much the main point of this, with or without these cameras, I will be doing this. So because I started doing this, I kind of keep upgrading and trying to do these a little bit better. But if these weren't here, I will still be doing this. And there are some weeks that I do this without the camera because maybe I just need to catch up on some videos. I do have some meal preps that aren't filmed and some that I have cut and just let die. But should let that heat up a little bit more because I did nothing. This is all just different types of ham. So I'm just doing this differently. It's a lot better when there's a little pocket for the egg just so that it doesn't overspill because sometimes that can happen. So. So 
I guess we can start with this because that still needs a little bit more time. So I like the egg white, but I don't like the egg yolk. So this is why I break it, but don't stir it. And when you stir it outside and pour it, you kind of get left with uneven mixtures. So that's why I do it this way. Speaking of Swiss, yesterday I made a mushroom Swiss burger. If you want to see that, that should be somewhere on my channel. It came out great. So the mushroom Swiss was portobello mushroom hamburger buns, like a smash burger with some onions and some garlic aioli. And it came out really well. So if you want to see that, now that I'm talking about Swiss, that's somewhere linked. Or maybe just down below or on my recents, who knows. So that's about it for these egg cups. This is going to go, I think it's going to be like 40 minutes because it's at a lower temperature today. That skin has bunched up like crazy. It just compacted. I didn't check that, but it still has like two hours left. What are we doing now? Let's talk for a little bit. So, because this is the last thing that goes for now, it's one o'clock, so I'll be back like in an hour, an hour and a half. I'm gonna just check the water level of the pork, just to make sure it's not drying out. And yeah, oh no, the eggs will be done before then. So like, come back at 45, take it out, show you real quick, and then, So there's actually more juice now than there was before. This has been about an hour later. Now I'm gonna take the egg cups out. We're gonna start the beef stuff. Carnitas are two hours in, about an hour, an hour and a half left. We'll take them out when we finish the beef and broccoli, right? So that's the thing about this. It's a lot longer and you see how the ham kind of crisped up a lot, but that's fine. That's not like a deal breaker. Those are just little ends, but everything else is the color it should be. So I'm gonna let that cool before I put that away into this little containers. And I guess I should say this cause I've been hearing this a lot. I don't reheat eggs, so they're back there. I don't reheat eggs, but when you have quiche and some other egg stuff, you can have that cold once they are cooked. That's how I eat that. It's a little weird for some people, but I've been doing it for a while. So for me personally, I've gotten used to it and it's not weird at all. Those are a lot better right now if I were to have it right now. But if I was going to cook it during the week, I wouldn't do that because that takes too long. Just make the omelet. It takes like 10 minutes. I just rather have my chia seed pudding and that ready. It helps me not cheat, especially in the morning. Like while I'm just waiting for something to be made, I might snack a little bit. So that's why I do that instead. Um, what did I say I was gonna do? Cut up an onion, a pepper, some mushrooms that were left over from yesterday. This broccoli and like a quarter of this cabbage, I'm gonna roast it. And then that will be sort of the base that the beef and all this stuff goes. And then also in the sauce, if I can find it, the sauce is gonna have ginger and garlic. I guess I can start the sauce now, right? Cause we have to dissolve the water. I mean, dissolve the sugar in the water. So we're gonna do that. I'm using Swerve brown sugar substitute. And this is not gonna be now cause I do need to heat up some water first. Um, with like two cups. Okay. I feel like something is not, something feels different to me. But are we all good? Are we all recording? We're all in here together. Let's start with the onion. We can do this. I highly doubt I need these. Yeah, I highly doubt I'm gonna need this many onions. But it's Sunday, so let's just not save an onion that I'm not gonna use for another five days. Okay. You know, I saw a video the other day about how to do an onion. I mean, a pepper, and it's not doing what I just did. But I like the way I do it, so I'm not changing. Right, the way they did it, like, it didn't include all of that stuff. I'm not a professional, so I don't care. Because that's all you need there. So, some of the onions and peppers are going to be used for the tacos. Is that enough? Because what we're using for the tacos is this, right? Diced tomatoes and green chilies. I don't think we need... So I'm gonna cook this up and it's gonna be on the side, but I am gonna use some mushrooms. Did I mention I made some mushroom Swiss burgers that you should try or you should watch? And then you should try, cause they came out phenomenal and I don't like what's on my hand right now. Now for this, I'm just gonna do it in two strips. I'm gonna use that long skillet back there 
for all these vegetables. Nothing too special there. Now the garlic and ginger. Now, in a recipe that I saw, it said an inch of garlic. That's how they described it. So I'm guessing that's what it is, right? I mean, it wasn't a recipe for this because this is not a recipe. I'm just saying in general, I saw a recipe that said use an inch of garlic. So that's how I'm going to describe it. And I'm going to peel this like a pineapple because I don't know if you're supposed to use that stuff. I'm gonna cut that in above because it makes my life easier. Like this is already a lot so i'm not going to use this much it was half an inch okay we can cook it you want to cook it let's cook it now what are we doing i'm going to start cooking this and then throw some stuff out season the meat and get that ready to get cooked as well let's start the sauce first that's going to take a little bit of time to thicken up this is a quarter. That rattling is really annoying. Oops. And now we go here. Now, on top of this is some avocado oil and some salt. And now we need a different one. And I also want some pepper and garlic powder. Okay. Now, I'm gonna cut up and season that beef. This can go over here. You can go away. Ugh. Forgot. This. this is sirloin steak tips. This is the type of meat I buy a lot. It's sort of like a medium cut, not too expensive, not too cheap. It's still tender enough. It's the one I prefer. So I'm going to season both sides, but I am going to cut this before I cook it. Nothing too special. Salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Okay. So how am I cutting this? Where is the grain? I don't even see in the grain. Because right, you want it to be short fibers. The grain is running this way. So along it and then against it. All right, and then cut this way against the grain. Okay, so that's that. That is our steak that we're using. I'm gonna mix some of that stuff up. So when this starts to smell like maple syrup, it's time to start it. And you see how it reduced down? Now you just have this, and now we do things. I'm going to reduce the heat. I said I wanted a quarter of soy sauce. This is strong, quite strong. And about two tablespoons of chili garlic. Well, this is very strong, so this gets a cup of water and that cup of water is what's gonna make it reduce down. I brought the heat back up, so that's gonna simmer and reduce down and it should become a thick sauce. So those vegetables are ready. I'm gonna take them to the side. I wanna take this off. Look how good that looks. So we're going to put this over here and take you back there. If you want to see it, I guess this is how they look from the side. This is the pepperoni. I guess you don't really see the pepperoni. A little burnt bottom. And this is with the back bacon. Again, you don't really see it too much. But you see that's a lot of egg white and that's what I like more than just having it all mixed together. But here's that. So the reason why I didn't So the reason why I didn't do it in batches is because I'm kind of going to overcook it. I'm not going to cook it to like a medium or anything. So they're all going to be very well done. So that's why I don't really care about that too much. So the last thing I'm going to do before is prepare this and put it in the oven and then I think 
part two is done. See, it's not a lot. It's nothing too, too much. It's just some cabbage that I want to shred up. Some avocado oil. Some pepper. That's pretty much it. So we're just gonna put this in here until it looks ready. Next. See now over here, I'm pretty sure you can reduce the heat because it's already kind of boiling or simmering. So I just lowered down the temperature. Next, take a seat while we think. That and that go together and that goes with that. That is in there already. That still needs some time to cook. We are at three hours over there. So about half an hour more. So we have now entered part three. While we're leaving part two, once I clean up, we will enter part three. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Is that even normal? No, it's not normal. So part three, what we doing? This is coming to get look oh look at that that's exactly what you want you see it's thickened up so i'm actually going to lower it again so we don't overcook this one let's try it that's exactly what you want i learned that with my sweet chili wings so which you should watch because I, I did those it came out really well so flip this bomb bro like I swear, oh my God. We're still good over there. So what's up? Okay, let me talk. We are all done. Pretty much the work part of this is done. All I'm waiting for is the steak to cook a little bit more. The sauce is good. I just don't want it to overheat. And then over there, that's our next goal because they're not done yet. So what we are going to do is, what do we want to do? What do you want to do? We have to shred it and then kind of torch it by 450 to finish it off you see how I'm scraping from the bottom so that all that can come back up now I'm not going to put all the steak in that sauce because I don't want the sauce to disappear on me now let's handle this Okay, so that's how we're looking. Now what we're gonna do is take the chunks out, put it on a separate tray, and shred it all up. I just put that at 450. The broccoli and cabbage need to come out. Now, I do wanna see what temperature is internal for this, because it's been going for three hours. Three hours? Yeah, three hours. It doesn't seem all that fork tender. And then we all have that juice. Now, to shred this. Are we good back here? I don't want to forget about things. Okay, so you see what happens here? Like I said before, I'm going to take half the steak, put it in there. And then about half of this. And mix it all together. And that is how it looks. Delicious. Oh. So this only cooked to 190. It should cook to 200, but it's going back in. But that is why when I do this, it's not going to be as tender as it could have been. But again, if I had started at 9.30 like I wanted to, this wouldn't be an issue. Oh, no. That was, oh, look, it is tender. See, I'm using the back of my fork to cut it all up. Look how great that looks. I mean, it's for some of them. It's not all of them that are going to be able to do that. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's super tender. What I would have done is like every hour just swirl around all the juices just so that the top doesn't dry out. Because I think it's the tops that are not coming apart. Now the next step when I'm putting this back into the oven at 450 is not to cook it. It's just to give it some of some crispy corners, some burnt ends. That's a whole different recipe, but that's the only reason why I'm putting it back in at 450. You can put it back in at broil if you wanted to, but I have the other piece of pork that does need to be for like half an hour at 450. Nope. Sheesh. Yeah, there was no way that fire alarm wasn't going off because that was 
insane in there. So I'm going to separate this out for this. Now this came out super good. Oh, are you done? You're done. Okay. So for anybody who knows me, they know I don't speak on my name a lot, but some of the stuff that is happening right now is absolutely amazing. This is, Look how good this is. I mean, I can't. This is, I have no words for that one. Okay, this is done. That is done. I'm gonna take that out and we are going to box it up. Now that does not have a side because I'm going to make it into tacos. I did this the wrong way. So hold on, this is on the bottom. Now. And there you go. Now I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. Should I box it up? I don't even know how to box it up. Let me see. Is that too big for a serving? No, we're gonna do it this way. Now, now if I was bringing it back to work, you would need a lot more containers. But for now, this is just keeping it to the side like this, making sure I have enough for a couple. Oh yeah, so this is this. That's pretty much it. And now let's make one taco for right now. Now I should have mentioned this earlier in the video, but these are what I'm using, carb balance flour. So it is 19 grams of total carbs and 15 of dietary fiber, which is four net carbs. And this is what I'm gonna be using for these tacos. This goes first. What do you wanna put first on this? Oh, and also these diced tomatoes are gonna go in. So this is a little bit too much for me to handle. So I think you are the one that needs to go away because you have no purpose here. Yeah, you to the side. So how do you want to do it? Carnitas, a little bit of tomato, a little bit of cheese so you can see it. And then it's pretty much it. Sour cream, put sour cream on my tacos, but I'm not sure if I want it in the picture. So assemble one and then see how it looks. Okay, so a little layer of these tomatoes right there. What we'll do is move this over. Next will be a layer of cheese. Okay, just along the inside. This is too much. Just like that. And a little stripe of sour cream. Where does that go? On the side? On this side? I'm gonna put it on this side. A little stripe. Looks kind of weird that way, but nothing could do now. But this is the idea for meal prep. This is how it's gonna look. I'm not gonna try it. I've been trying this. This is really good. Let me set some stuff up. Put this to the side. I have no more sides. Um, I'm gonna put this in the pictures just so people get it, the idea of what I'm doing. Right here. I forgot that I have a couple of this, which is the peppers and onions. It goes there in that layer. I'm gonna turn it around because I think that layer of sour cream was ill-advised. But you have the tomatoes, you can see. Then you have the little carnitas, peppers and onions, and some mushroom that doesn't really belong. Okay. So that's about it for this week. This was my meal prep. This is a spicy and sweet sirloin steak kind of beef. I think it's called Mongolian beef, but I'm not sure. So this is just the sweet chili sauce that I use for my wings. And I kind of did a little bit more with this and I think it came out a lot better. And that's on the side of some cabbage and some broccoli. And over here is some carnitas that I'm going to have as tacos throughout the week, but I'm not going to prepare the tacos for the week because then the tortilla gets soggy. So just to show you how I separated it out and what it was will look like throughout the week. So if you are interested in learning more about how you can fit some of this stuff into your week to week meal prep, all of these will have their own recipe. Those will be linked down below or just on my page in general. I hope to see you in one of those. You should hit that subscribe button if this is something that you do want to keep seeing. No. Um, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see more of these. I do this pretty much week to week. If I was doing this on camera or not, I will still be doing it. That didn't make sense. Okay. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. This is what I do week to week. These are my meal preps. Even if these cameras weren't on, I would still be doing this. I thought it was worthwhile just to show you how I keep keto sustainable long term and not at all restrictive. Make sure to... Oh. I'm everywhere at Keto is the Worst and I hope to see you in the next video.